Okay, in this uh, section, we're going to talk about integration of exponential functions. So, the simple form is exactly that. It's pretty simple. If you ever need to integrate um, a function e to the x with respect to the variable x, then that's just e to the x, of course, plus a constant if you're doing an indefinite integral. So for an example here, let's do uh, something like the integral of cosine x plus 3e to the x dx. Okay, well we know our rules for integration. We can integrate the cosine of x, and we know from our trig rules that when we integrate cosine x we get sine x. And we know that if we integrate a constant times a function, that's the same as the constant, which is 3, times the integral of this function. And we know the integral from over here, that if we integrate e to the x, we know we'll just get e to the x. So basically, we just get sine x plus 3e e to the x plus a constant. Now, but sometimes you're going to actually have not the form e to the x, dx, you're actually going to have the form, the general form, where you have to integrate e to the u du. And sometimes they'll work out perfect, and sometimes you'll have to um, manipulate them. I'll show you one over here that works out perfectly. Um, in this integral, you have 2x e to the x squared dx. Well, this right here e to the x squared is actually the e to the u. And since if that's e to the u, then what does u have to be? Well, u would have to be the x squared, right? So that would make the du be the derivative of that dx. So du would be 2x dx. So now going back to our substitution. All right, so now the 2x and the dx they comprise and make up du. And then the e to the x squared is e to the u. So therefore, we can say this is in the form of e to the u du. And once it's in that form, then when you integrate e to the u du, you just get e to the u plus a constant. And since we're doing an indefinite integral, we replace u with what it, we uh, substituted for and that would be x squared. So that would be e to the x squared plus constant. Okay, so here's some examples of that use the simple form. This is just x plus e to the x dx. We want to integrate that function. Well, you know how to integrate x. You can use the simple power rule. You get x squared over 2, and then e to the x, you integrate it, you get e to the x plus a constant. Okay, here's another one. Um, if you integrate 5 e to the x, you just get 5e to the x. If you integrate minus 2x, you just get minus x squared. And then if you integrate 1, you just get x. So that's our, our answer there. 5e to the x minus x squared plus x plus a constant. Uh, one more. This one, if you integrate 6x squared, you get 6x cubed over 3. And then when you integrate minus 2e to the x, you're just going to get minus 2e to the x and then plus a constant at the end, and so that simplifies to 2x cubed minus 2e to the x plus a constant. Uh, D, I actually just did that one, so let's not even uh, do that. I don't know why I did it again. Um, but here's an example. Um, let's take a look at this example. If you want to integrate x e to the 4x squared, the key here is usually when you have e raised to a function of x, you can try the e to the u rule. So if we're going to try the e to the u rule, then u is going to have to be this 4x squared here. So let's give that a try. If u is 4x squared, then du would be 8x dx, the derivative 4x squared times dx. Well, I don't have, a, I don't have an 8 here. So what I can do is I can multiply the inside by 8 and the outside by 1 over 8. 
And so if I multiply the inside by 8 and the outside by 1 over 8, well, that's really the same as just multiplying the whole thing by 8 over 8. But I just leave the 1 8 on the outside and move the numerator 8 to the inside. Okay, so now you can see that this is du, and then this is e to the u. I just happen to have the 1 8 that's got a tag along with us. So we end up with 1 8 times the integral e to the u du. And since we're integrating e to the u, we just get 1 8 e to the u plus a constant. And then we go ahead and sub for uh, u, 4x squared. Okay? Well, now that I've got you believing that anytime you see e to the u, you're going to use the e to the u rule, let me uh, throw you a curve. Here you have e to the 3x times e to the 3x plus 1 raised to the fourth. Well, here I'm actually going to use a power rule because if I let u be this portion right here that's raised to the fourth power, then that would mean that u is e to the 3x plus 1, and then du would be 3e to the 3x dx. Now, so what I can do here is, let me do, a, I'm going to do a little rearranging here just to make life a little easier for us. So let me just rearrange. So here I have the e to the 3x dx over here. Now, notice that du is 3e to the 3x dx. So I need a factor of 3 in here. Well remember I can put a factor of 3 in there as long as I multiply the outside by 1 -third, the reciprocal. So now this is actually du. So this is du. Now this is not e to the u is it? This is actually u to the fourth. Because remember, u was e to the 3x plus 1. So this is actually u to the 4th power du. So actually, this one I'm going to use a power rule. Okay? So if I do the power rule, well, u to the 4th integrates to u to the 5 over 5, and then times 1 third plus a constant. So that would be u to the 5 over 15 plus a constant and then just replace u with the substitution I used, e to the 3x plus 1, and I get e to the 3x plus 1, all raised to the 5th over 15, plus a constant. Now you could do this one like we did up there, but actually it's easier probably just to multiply this out. So if I distribute, since this is not raised to a power, it's easy, so I can just do e to the 3x times e to the 3x, and I get e to the 6x, and then uh, e to the 3x times 1 is e to the 3x. And we know that that would be the same as the integral of e to the 6x dx plus the integral of e to the 3x dx. Well, actually, um, if you let u be 6x, then du would be 6dx. So I would need a 6 with the dx, and I'd have to put a 1 6 outside. For this one, if I let u equal 3x, then du would be 3dx, so I'd need to multiply the inside by 3 and the outside by a third. So then, then that first integral would be 1 6, the integral e to the u du, and the second integral would be 1 third, the integral e to the v dv. I used v here just not to confuse it with the first one, but e to the v dv. So, so technically, I guess on the second one, I was letting v be 3x, and then dv would be 3dx. So, now when you integrate these, you just get 1 6th e to the u plus 1 3rd e to the v. Well, u was 6x, so that would be 1 6th e to the 6x, and v was 3x, so that would be 1 3rd e to the 3x plus a constant. So there's your final answer. Well, actually... You could, you could show a little property here that any time you have e to the ax uh, dx, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that if you have e to the ax dx, then that's actually going to equal 1 over a e to the ax plus a constant. So, for example, 
from now on, anytime you see e to some constant times x that you need to integrate, like e to the 5x dx, well, that's just going to be one-fifth e to the 5x plus a constant. Okay, so that's always true. So again, like if I had e to the 7x uh, dx, then we know from this property that the integral would simply be one-seventh e to the 7x plus a constant. And you can actually take the derivative of this, this part right here, and you can see that you'll end up with e to the 7x. Okay, go ahead and take a look at these two rules. This is for 1 over x dx. If you integrate 1 over x dx, you get natural log of the absolute value of x. And the general form is if you have 1 over u du, you get natural log of the absolute value of u. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Now, I'll let you read this one. Now, notice the difference between these two. I'll let you do number one. On number one, notice that I'm going to use the power rule. Why? Because the denominator is raised to a, a power greater than one or different than one. But over here, if you look at this, the denominator is just to the first power. So in that case, I could think of maybe this is in the form of du over u if I let u be the denominator. So here if I let u be the denominator, u equals x cubed plus 5x, then du would be 3x squared plus 5 times dx. Well, notice that is the numerator. So the numerator is du, the denominator is u, so I simply get the integral du over u, which integrates to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus a constant, and then you replace u with the substitution that we used, x cubed plus 5x. Now again, if you notice over here, we did the power rule, and that's because the denominator was raised to a power. Okay, here's, let me do this one first. Um, on this one, you actually have, this one's kind of, might be difficult to tell, but let me show you this. If you let um, u be natural log of x, then du is 1 over x dx. So basically, if you think of it as e to the natural log of x times 1 over x dx, then that integrates to the 1 over u du. I, I mean, sorry, that integrates to the e to the u du, my bad, e to the u du. And when you integrate e to the u du, you just get e to the u plus a constant. And e to the natural log of x plus a constant. Well, e to the natural log of x is just x, so that's just x plus a constant. Now, actually, I kind of tricked you on that one because here you could have simplified it here and found out that that's e to the natural log of x, which is x. So that's x over x, which is just the integral of 1 dx, which is x plus a constant. So anyway, it still works out. Okay, let's finish with one more of du over u type problem. So here, this might look complicated, but actually, if you look at the denominator, all of this is not raised to a power other than 1. So let's just let u equal e to the x plus e to the minus x, and guess what du is? You can check it, but if you take the derivative of that, you're going to get e to the x minus e to the minus x times dx. So this numerator here, e to the x minus e to the minus x dx is actually du, and the denominator is u. So I'm just integrating du over u, and then um, when you integrate that, you get natural log, natural log of the absolute value of u plus a constant, and then I replace u with my expression, uh, e to the x plus e to the negative x. And then... Um, since e to the x plus e to the negative x can't be negative, you can actually remove the absolute value for that problem. You might want to do some more practice, look up some more practice problems for uh, this particular. I only did a couple of them for you, but that's, that's all I have time to do for this video. So uh, I'm going to finish this section with some applications that involve exponentials and log uh, integrals or derivatives.